Masak hair. You don't need to translate that. <laughs> Our family is so blessed to be a part of this church. You know, today, December 7th, we will have been here four months. We moved here four months ago, August 7th, to Jordan. Nishkarab. As Pastor Yusuf said, I want to discuss with you another date tonight, October 31st, 1517. I think Pastor Yusuf might have already given you the answer, but why is this date significant? What happened on this date, October 31st, 1517? It's not a rhetorical question. I want answers. I want an answer. And the Iowa, Masbut. It was on October 31st, 1517, when Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to the church door in Germany. And these writings were concerning certain corruptions that were prevalent in the church of his day. In this particular event is considered by historians the beginning, the launching of what is called the Protestant Reformation. Here's kind of a serious one, but I thought I'd have a fun one too. The kids call these memes. أي هذا كان صورة لمارتن لوثر بقول أنا مش مش دائما بسمر أشياء على البواب بس لما بسوي أشياء مهمة تحدث. It's meant to be funny, by the way. It's okay. It's okay. He didn't really say that. He didn't really say that. That's not a direct quote. هذا يعني مش بالضبط. I'll keep the I'll keep the serious one up. But I was actually blessed to preach on October 31st of this year from this very pulpit, this very church, at the great Tuesday night service. And if you've done the math, 2017, this is uh, the 500th anniversary of the launching of the Protestant Reformation. And just about all churches, even churches that don't consider themselves heirs of the Protestant Reformation, all churches just about throughout the Middle East and all over the world have been deeply influenced by the Protestant Reformation. In fact, if you are a member of Alliance Church, you are a part of the Protestant Reformation. Surprise! And just to give you a few examples of things that the Protestant Reformation changed in church life that were very different afterwards, let me just give you a few examples. One would be what we just did for the last 30 minutes. Martin Luther was the first person to encourage the congregation to sing along with the leaders from the front. Martin Luther encouraged the So that all the people, so that all the people could sing the hymns and praises to God during the service. Also, I think everybody here probably has an English translation of their Bible or an Arabic translation of their Bible, a Bible in their own language. Even a Bible that you can take home with you, a personal Bible that you can have all the time. 
The first 1500 years of the church did not have such luxuries. أول 1500 سنة ما كان عندهم هاي الامتيازات. And it was the Protestant Reformation that launched thousands of translations of the Bible into the common tongue, whether it was French, whether it was German, whether it was English, whatever the language was, the Protestant Reformation launched this Bible translation program. والإصلاح البروتستانتي فعلا هو كان البداية لانطلاق هذه النسخ العديدة من كافة اللغات في العالم. But most importantly, the centrality of the preaching of the word and the preaching of the gospel. وأهم شيء مركزية تعليم الإنجيل أو الكلمة was emphasized by the Protestant Reformation. كان عليها تركيز بواسطة الإصلاح. In fact, notice where this pulpit is. لاحظين وين المنبر موجود؟ It is not by accident that it is at the very center of this worship of this worship center. وهذا مش بالصدفة إنه المنبر هو في مركز الكنيسة. And if you go to just about any Protestant, a church of the of, as an heir of the Protestant Reformation, it will be the same. The pulpit will be at the center. وإذا بتروح على أي كنيسة بروتستانتية رح تلاقي إنه المنبر هو في المركز الكنيسة. The, the Reformation was, these churches and the Reformation is making a statement, is exalting the preaching of the word and the gospel. To the prominence it held with Jesus, the apostles, and the early church, really for the first 500 years. ويعمل في وقت المسيح ووقت الرسل أن توعظ بالكلمة. As Paul thundered to Timothy, preach the word. مثل ما حكى بولس الرسول لتيموثاوس عظ بالكلمة. Preach it in season, preach it out of season. في وقت مناسب وفي وقت غير مناسب. Preach the word, Timothy. عظ بالكلمة يا تيموثاوس. Preach the gospel. عظ بالإنجيل. Preach Christ and Him crucified and risen again. عظ بالمسيح مصلوبا. So I want to tell you the story of some of the reformers and even the pre-reformers. But I want to tell you their stories the way the book of Acts tells the stories of the apostles. Because when you really study the book of Acts, you find that it's not mainly about heroic men and women. منشوف إنه أعمال الرسل ما بيحكي عن رجال ونساء ونساء عمالقة أو عظماء. People like Paul or Peter or Lydia. مثل بولس وبطرس وليديا. When you study Luke's outline, when you really outline the key emphasis of the book of Acts, as I've done here. وإذا بتطلع يعني على على التلخيص. تاع أعمال الرسل راح تشوفوه بالطريقة التالية. You see that the book of Acts is really about progressing and showing you how the word of God grew mightily and conquered. بتشوفوا أن أعمال الرسل يركز كيف كيف كانت كلمة الله تنمو وتغزو العالم. Acts 19:20 is a key verse. مثلاً في أعمال الرسل 19:20 هاي يعني آية جوهرية أو مركزية. The word of the Lord was growing mightily and conquering. هكذا كانت كلمة الرب تنمو وتقوى بشدة. Seven times in the book of Acts, something like that is said. سبع مرات في أعمال الرسل انحكى هذا الكلام. They are like seven progress reports telling you how the word of God is conquering Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, Antioch, Asia Minor, Europe, Rome. وفي سبع تقارير في أعمال الرسل تحكي لنا كيف كلمة الله غزت القدس السامرة أنطاكيا وآسيا الصغرى وأوروبا وروما. Luke wants it to be clear who wrote Acts. Luke who wrote Acts wants it to be clear. It is not Peter or Paul or Philip or Lydia or Mary. يعني أعمال الرسل عم بقول هو مش رسول بطرس أو بولس أو ليديا أو فلان. Who are transforming lives and conquering cities and nations and empires? الذي كانوا يغيرون الناس ويغزون المدن بالكلمة. It is the word of God accomplishing accomplishing this through them by the power of the Holy Spirit. إنما الذي كان يغزو ويغير هو كلمة الله من خلالهم وبقوة الروح القدس. Paul captures this idea well in his letters, specifically the ones he wrote from prison. وبولس الرسول يركز على هذا الموضوع خاصة في الرسالة أو الرسائل التي كتبها وهو في السجن. Paul wrote five of his letters chained to a Roman soldier. 
كان كان موثوق وهو في روما بجندي روماني. And Philippians is one of them. وإحدى رسائل هاي هي كانت رسالة فيليبي. Notice what he says to the Philippians and to those who are saddened and concerned that the great apostle has been imprisoned. انتبهوا شو كان يحكي بولس الرسول للناس اللي كانوا قلقين ومهتمين لسجن بولس. He says, "Now I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ." ثم أريد أن تعلموا أيها الإخوة أن أموري قد آلت أكثر إلى تقدم الإنجيل حتى أن وثقي صار ظاهرة في المسيح في كل دار الولاية وفي باقي الأماكن أجمع. Even though I am in chains, the word of God is going all throughout this palace. حتى وأنا موثوق وفي وثقي إلا أن كلمة الله عم تنتشر في كل مكان. And notice what he says right at the end of the letter. وانتبهوا شو عم بحكي في نهاية رسالة فيليبي. He drops this bombshell. بعمل هذا هذه الآية وبحكي هذا الإعلان. All the saints send you greetings, especially those who belong to Caesar's household. يسلم عليكم جميع القديسين ولا سيما الذين من بيت قيصر. Meaning not only Roman soldiers, but even elite politicians in Caesar's court are coming to Christ through Paul. مش بس الجنود الرومانيين لكن حتى المسؤولين والقضاء في الإمبراطورية الرومانية قد أتوا للمسيح. I like to picture Paul as he was chained to each Roman soldier. The soldiers would take turns with Paul. تخيلوا هذا هدول الجنود الرومانيين اللي بخدوا أدوار عشان يحرسوا لبولس. And he would lead one to Christ, and then the other one would be coming on the next shift, and he'd say, "Oh, come over. I got something to talk to you about." واحد ورا الثاني عماله شفت ورا شفت عماله إيش بأمنوا بالمسيح. And in Second Timothy, which he wrote chained in a dungeon in Rome. ولما كتب رسالته إلى تيميثاوس أيضا كان موثوقا ب ب بالسجن. Right before he was beheaded under the emperor Nero. بز يعني تماما قبل ما قطع رأسه من قبل نيرون. He said this. قال هكذا. Remember Jesus Christ raised from the dead, descended from David. This is my gospel. For which, for, okay, go ahead. Sorry. For which I am suffering even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. بقول بتمثاوس الثاني تمني لسه بقول أذكروا يسوع المسيح المقام من الأموات من نسل داود بحسب إنجيلي الذي فيه أحتمل المشقات حتى القيود كمذنب لكن كلمة الله لا تقيد. See that's the key theme of my message right there. God's word is not chained. He's chained, but God's word is not chained. هذه هي إلى رسالتي لكم في هذا المساء كلمة الله. لا تقيد هو مقيد لكن كلمة الله لا تقيد. The emperor Nero may behead Paul. نيرون القيصر أمر بقطع رأسه. He may crucify Peter. ممكن يصلب بطرس. Burn their scripture and murder and imprison thousands of Christians, which he did. ممكن يحرق الإنجيل ويحرق الآلاف من المسيحيين وفعل ذلك حقيقة. But the word of God cannot be destroyed. لكن كلمة الله لا يمكن تدميرها. The word of God cannot be changed. كلمة الله لا يمكن أن تقيد. In fact, when you think about the Bible, no book has been burned more in history than the Bible. لا يوجد كتاب في التاريخ حرق أكثر من الإنجيل. And yet it continues to grow mightily and to conquer. لكنه ينمو بقوة ويغزو العالم. As Jesus said, the heavens and the earth will pass away. كما قال المسيح السماء والأرض تزولان. But my words will never pass away. لكن كلامي لا يزول أبدا. And upon this rock I will build my church. وعلى هذه الصخرة أبني كنيستي. And the gates of hell will not conquer it. وبالجحيم لن تقوى عليها. And this is exactly what we've witnessed when you when we study history. وإحنا هذا اللي 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 منختبره عندما ندرس التاريخ. The word of God growing mightily and conquering individuals, nations, and empires. كلمة الله تنمو بقوة وتغزو الأفراد والأمم والمجتمعات. After the apostles, the early Christians continued to proclaim the word of God. ملاحظ يعني بعد التلاميذ استمر المسيحيين بإعلان كلمة الله. Christ and Him crucified all throughout the Roman Empire. المسيح كانوا يعلنوه مصلوبا في كل الإمبراطورية الرومانية. Until they turned the Roman Empire upside down. حتى قلبوا الإمبراطورية الرومانية رأسا على عقب. The cross went from the place of execution to the foreheads of emperors. 
تخيلوا انه الصليب تحول من ان يكون موقع الاعدام لصار على جباه القياصره because the caesar that the same caesar that crucified jesus now were being baptized and having the cross put on their foreheads amazing لانه الامبراطور نفسه الذي امر بقتل وحرق كل هذول المسيحيين صار مسيحي ووضع الصليب على and the testimonies of the christians during this time are incredible of their faithfulness وشهادة المسيحيين في ذاك الوقت كانت عظيمة جدا وايمانهم كان عميق جدا i just wanted to give you a taste بدي اعطيكم بس هيك لمحه the first one's from justin martyr in the second century هذا من شخص اسمه جاستن جاستن مارتر ب which century second century اه بالقرن الثاني he really has a great name by the way هو له اسم يعني عشان بيشبه اسمه جاستن he says for it is plain that though beheaded and crucified من الواضح ان الذين قطعوا رؤوسهم وصلبوا and thrown to wild beasts and chains and fire ورموا في جب الوحوش وفي القيود وفي النار and all other kinds of torture وكل انواع التعذيب we meaning christians do not give up our confession نحن يعني ممكن او نحن لا نستسلم ولا نتخلى عن ايماننا but the more such things happen وكلما حدثت مثل تلك الاشياء the more do others and in larger numbers become faithful and worshipers of god زاد عدد الناس الذين يؤمنون ويعبدون الله through the name of jesus من خلال اسم يسوع المسيح and not too long after him a man named tertullian made this famous statement the blood of christians is seed وفي شخص برضه تريتليان اسمه حكى دم المسيح هو بذره So during St Paul's life sorry so during St Paul's life so خلال حياة رسول بولس Christianity was 0.00001% of the Roman Empire كانت نسبة المسيحية 10 واحد بال 10000 بالمئة but 300 years later بعد 300 سنة Christianity was well over 90% of the Roman Empire صارت الامبراطورية الرومانية 90% منها مسيحية an incredible turn of events تخيلوا يعني احداث انقلبت على راسها one historian put it this way في قصة راح نحطها بهالشكل the gods of Egypt and Greece and Rome that had been worshipped for thousands of years آلهة روما واليونان ومصر الذي تم عبادتهم لالاف السنين They had lost and Christ had won. خسروا جميعا والذي ربح هو المسيح. آمين. And after the fall of the Roman Empire in the 5th century, وبالقرن الخامس عشر وبعدما انهارت الامبراطورية الرومانية, the word of God continued to grow mightily and to conquer. كلمة الله انتشرت بقوة أكثر وغزت أكثر. In many parts of the world, especially Asia and Africa and into Europe. وأجت على أزاء كبيرة من آسيا وأفريقيا وأوروبا. And in Europe, we find that around the 10th century. وفي أوروبا وحتى القرن العاشر. Mainly in Europe, but but most many of the churches at this time. بشكل خاص بأوروبا. We see corruption start to infiltrate into the leadership and into the the churches. منشوف إنه الفساد بدأ يتسلل. في الكنيسة وقيادتها. And these are the kind of corruptions that Luther, 500 years later, will rail against in his theses. وهذا النوع من الفساد هو الذي اعترض عليه مارتن لوثر في القرن بعد مئات السنين. And as a result of these corruptions, the reformers and the pre-reformers start to arise and call them out. وبسبب هذا الفساد بدأ المصلحون وما قبل المصلحين أن يبرزوا. Let me tell you about a few of them. وأنا بدي أحكيك اليوم عن بعض هذول المصلحين. The first person who spoke out against the corruption in the church, the first pre-reformer, وأول شخص ما قبل المصلحين that we know of was named Waldo. كان اسمه Waldo. Not a popular name. Not not nowhere, I think. يعني مش كتير معروف هذا الاسم. We don't know a lot about him except that he was very wealthy and he sold all that he had. ما بنعرف عنه كثير اشياء لكن بنعرف عنه انه كان غني جدا وباع كل ما لديه. When he heard Christ call to sell everything you own and come and follow me. عندما سمع كلام المسيح بيع كل شيء واتبعني. And he wanted to live a strict in strict adherence to the Sermon on the Mount. 
وكان بده يعيش طبقا للوعظة على الجبل. This is a statue of Peter Waldo in in uh, Germany. هذا هو تمثال والدو في ألمانيا. His followers became known as the Waldensians. والذين تبعوا والدو صار صار اسمهم الوالدونيين. They began translating the scriptures from Latin into French, which what he was from France. وبلشوا يترجموا الكتاب المقدس من اللغة اللاتينية إلى اللغة الفرنسية لأنه كانوا في فرنسا. And they began doing something that was unprecedented for centuries. They preached the gospel in the streets. They went to the people. وكانوا يبشروا بالإنجيل في الشوارع بين الناس. At, the, at this time, people had to come to the church to hear the gospel, maybe in Latin, which wasn't their language, and they'd have to have it translated. But the Waldensians proclaimed the gospel in their language, in the streets, and in their homes. This is how one of their enemies described them that we have. أحد أعداءهم وصفهم بهذا الوصف. He said these people have no dwelling place. هذول الأشخاص ليس عندهم مكان يسكنون به. They go around two by two, barefoot and dressed in coarse tunics. يجلون اثنين اثنين وهم يعني حفاء ولبسين أروبة خشنة. They own nothing, sharing everything in common, like the apostles. لا يملكون أي شيء لكنهم يشتركون في كل شيء كما فعل التلاميذ. Naked they follow a naked Christ. عريانين كما هو المسيح العاري. And the Waldensians were eventually denounced as heretics by the church of their day. و وقد اعتب الكنيسة اعتبرت هذول الولدانيين أنهم هراطقة. And they were persecuted for centuries until they ended up becoming a part of the Protestant Reformation. وهم اضطهدوا لسنوات عديدة وصاروا جزء من الإصلاح البروتستانت. But what was their crimes? What were the crimes and the heresies of the Waldensians? لكن يعني شو كانت جريمتهم هدول الوالدونيين يعني؟ Their crimes were translating the scriptures so that everyone could read them in their own language. جريمتهم كانت أنهم ترجموا الكتاب المقدس للغة مفهومة ولغة الناس. And preaching the word in the common tongue in the street. ووعظوا بالكلمة بلغة الشوارع. Many of them were killed and imprisoned, but the word of God was not changed. وكثيرين قتلوا وسجنوا لكن كلمة الله كانت تنمو وتغزو. It grew mightily and conquered. تنمو بقوة وتغزو بشدة. There are still Waldensian churches today, by the way. لسه اليوم بالكنائس في والدونيين. About 200 years after Waldo, John Wycliffe arose. بعد متين سنة من Waldo في شخص أجا اسمه John Wycliffe. He translated illegally. Illegally, he trans he translated the entire Bible from Latin into English. ترجم الكتاب المقدس قانونيا من اللغة اللاتينية إلى اللغة الإنجليزية. He was the first person in history to do this. أول شخص في التاريخ يفعل ذلك. And just so you know, at that time they didn't have the computers. They didn't have backspace. He had to do all this with a pen, dipping it in ink each time. تخيلوا انه ما كانش وقتها في كمبيوتر وكان في قلم وورقه وبده يغط القلم بالحبر ويكتب. An incredible feat. Sorry? An incredible accomplishment. اه يعني انجاز عظيم جدا. He's been called the morning star of the Reformation. ولقبوه بنجم نجم الصباح الاصلاحي. He also sent out his followers two by two to preach the gospel in the streets and in people's homes in the common tongue. And even though he was persecuted during his lifetime, he actually died peacefully in his bed. Which is a rare thing for these pre-reformers and reformers. They usually die horrible deaths. But the church later condemned him as a heretic after he was dead. And they dug up his body, they burned his bone to ashes, and they dumped them in the river. Yet his ministry of getting the word of God out 
to the people. يعني كانت خدمته أن ينشر الكلمة الله للناس. Still carries on in his name all over the world today. واسمه اليوم منتشر بكل العالم. I'm sure you've heard of the Wycliffe Bible translators. بجوز سمعتوا مترجمين اسمه ويكليف للكتاب المقدس. They and other organizations like them have now translated the Bible into 2,500 of the languages. In the world today. تخيلوا هدول الجمعيات ترجموا الكتاب المقدس إلى 2500 لغة في العالم. There are around 6,000 languages, known languages on planet Earth. بالعالم على الأرض في 6,000 لغة. And they have a plan to translate them all. وتخيلوا عندهم خطة إنه يترجموهم كلهم. And in شاء الله they will. وإن شاء الله بدهم يسووا هذا الشيء. The word of God continues to grow mightily and to conquer. كلمة الله تنمو بشدة وتغزو. And within a few decades of Wycliffe. John Huss arose. وبعد عصور من من جون أجا أجا شخص اسمه جون هاس. He was truly the Martin Luther of the 14th century. هو كان مارتن لوثر القرن الرابع عشر. He was a pastor from the Czech Republic. كان هو قصيص في تشيك اللي هي جمهورية التشيك تشيكوسلوفاكيا. And he spoke out openly, boldly against the greed and the lusts and the power that was going on in the church of his day. وتحدث ب بجراءة عن 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 الشهوة وعن الكبرياء وغيرها. And he too preached the gospel in the towns and in the marketplaces and in the streets. وعظ بكلمة الله بالشارع وبالأسواق وفي المدن. And in the fields, and for these crimes, ومن أجل هذه الجريمة, for these crimes of John Huss that I just elucidated, هاي الجريمة شو الأشياء اللي سواها جون هاس? He was tied to a stake and burned alive. ربطوا على وتد وأحرقوا. And you can burn and destroy John Huss. ممكن أنت تحرق جون هاس. But you cannot burn or destroy the word he proclaimed. لكن لا تستطيع أن تحرق وأن تدمر كلمة الله. In fact, there's a fascinating statement. It may be apocryphal, but it's attributed to John Huss that he said before his martyrdom. وفي جملة مشهورة نسبت إلى هذا الشخص جون هاس بتقول. He said, "Today you will roast a lean goose." Is that difficult? No, no, it's okay. اليوم يمكنك أن 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 تشوي بط أوزة ضعيفة. His last name Hus meant goose, by the way. It meant goose. على فكرة Hus معناتها وزة وزة. But a hundred years from now, you will hear a swan sing. لكن أنت بعد مئة سنة مليون سوف تسمع بجعة بجعة تغني. And a hundred and two years later, this guy showed up. وبعد مئة سنة فعلا طلع هذا الشخص. And nailed those ninety-five theses to the church door. وعلق العريضة بالتسعة وسبعين سبعة وتسعين طلب على باب الكنيسة. And these are some of his most famous words, by the way, that he said at the trial. He said, "Here I stand. I can do no other. God help me. Amen." وهذه يعني هم كانوا يحاكموا فيه أو كان يحكي هاي الجملة المشهورة. ها أنا أقف. ما بدر أعمل شيء تاني ربي ساعدني آمين. آمين. But Luther, by the way, attributed the entire Reformation to the Word, not to himself. وقدم حقيقة مارتن لوثر الإصلاح ليس لنفسه بل للعالم. This is one of his great quotes. He has many great ones. This is one of the greatest. وهذه يعني إحدى المقتبسات من من كلامه. He said, "Take myself as an example." خدوا نفسي كمثال. I simply taught, preached, and wrote God's word. أنا بكل بساطة علمت ووعظت وكتبت كلمة الله. Otherwise, I did nothing. وغير ذلك يعني لم أم أفعل شيئاً. And while I slept or drank Wittenberg beer with my friends Philip and Amsdorf. وبينما نمت وقضيت وقت ممتع مع أصدقائي فيليب وأمسدورف. The word so greatly weakened the church leadership that no prince or emperor ever inflicted such losses upon it. كلمة الله أضعفت قادة الكنيسة بحيث لا لا أمير ولا إمبراطور فعلا أثر بهذه الخسارة عليها. I did nothing. The word did everything. أنا لم أفعل شيئا. كلمة الله عملت كل شيء. That's one of the best quotes. While he was having a beer, the word reformed the church. وبينما كان هو يقضي هذا الوقت مع أصحابه غيرت الكنيسة. And I could tell you tens of thousands of stories of how the word of God has grown mightily and conquered. وبدر أحكي لكم يعني عشرات الآلاف من القصص كيف كلمة الله غزت وغيرت. Since Luther over the last 500 years. من وقت لوثر قبل 500 سنة. 
And most of these stories would be about men and women who are heirs of the Protestant Reformation. But let me close and lead into direct application for us with another revolutionary event from our own time. Just happened 30 years ago. The fall of communism throughout Europe. After World War II, many nations came under the rule of communism. Where atheism was the state religion. religion. Bibles were banned under communism. And as you can imagine, Christians were oppressed and persecuted. This all lasted about 40 years, from the late 1940s to 1990. And in 1990, these nations became free. The walls of communism fell. All in one lifetime. You think about all the regimes that rose, arose and fell in the 20th century, in one lifetime. Whether the Nazis or the communists. And why did the walls of communism fall? How did the Iron Curtain get demolished? Well, there are no doubt political answers to this. But I love what the Christians who worked behind the scenes in the Iron Curtain, what they said about it. Christians like Brother Andrew. They said it fell ultimately due to the spread of the Word of God. And the prayers and acts of mercy of the persecuted Christians living behind the Iron Curtain. And Brother Andrew is one of the many Christians who smuggled in millions of Bibles into these areas. And therefore the word of God grew mightily and conquered those areas. And just think of all the simple acts of obedience and love that happened behind the Iron Curtain that we'll never know about until heaven. You should read God's Smuggler, read God's Calling by Brother Andrew. He tells many of these stories. God's Smuggler, God's Calling. God's Calling. And most of these nations, by the way, that were previously under communist rule are now majority Christian nations. Which brings me to my application to all of us. Let the word of God run. I love how Paul puts it. Finally, brothers, pray for us that the word of the Lord may run and be glorified, be exalted. Use every means you have, every creative mind you have to get the word of God. Whether through your lips, whether through your pen, whether through social media, Facebook, Twitter, and many of those other ones that I don't, I'm not a part of. At work, at school, let the word of God run and conquer. The great British preacher Charles Spurgeon one time said that you defend the Bible the same way you defend a lion. 
Just let it out of its cage. اتركه ينطلق من القفص تاعه. The Bible doesn't need defense. Just let it out. الانجيل ليس بحاجه لدفاع لكن اتركه. And believe the promise of God. واثق بوعد الله. In Isaiah 55 he says it. في اشعيا 55 As the rain I'll, I'll read the whole thing. Okay. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and the bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. لأنه كما ينزل المطر والثلج من السماء ولا يرجعان إلى هناك بل يرويان الأرض ويجعلانها تلد وتنبت وتعطي زرعا للزارع وخبزا للآكل هكذا تكون كلمتي التي تخرج من فمي لا ترجع إلي فارغة بل تعمل ما سررت به وتنجح فيما أرسلتها له It will not return empty. Do you believe that? I hope you do. بتآمن إنه كلمة الله مش رح ترجع فارغة آمين 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 And every day pray Paul's great prayer in Ephesians 6. وصلي في كل يوم كما صلى بولس في رسالة أفسس He says pray also for me. Okay. That whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. بقول بأفسس 6 والعدد 19 بقول وصلوا لأجلي لكي يعطى لي كلام عند افتتاح فمي لأعلم جهارا بسر الإنجيل الذي لأجله أنا سفير في سلاسل لكي أجاهر فيه كما يجب أن أتكلم. Be inspired by the apostles, by the early church. يريد يعني هدول ال ال الرسل والكنيسة تلهمنا. By the pre-reformers and the reformers. نلهم من قبل المصلحين وما قبل المصلحين. By Brother Andrew and so many of those unsung heroes behind the Iron Curtain. مثل هدول الأبطال مثل الأخ أندرو وغيرهم خلف الستار الحديدي. Who in their own way and their own power unleashed the Word of God. الذين بطرقهم الخاصة وبقوة معينة نشروا الإنجيل وأطلقوه. And saw it grow mightily and conquer. حتى تنمو بقوة. وتغزو. All in one lifetime, nations can be transformed. مرة واحدة في العمر وفي الحياة الأمم تتغير. Imagine what the word of God can do in our lifetime. تخيل ماذا يمكن لكلمة الله أن تعمل في حياتنا. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. شكرا كثير دكتور جاستن أخ حسام. أعتقد مناسب نأخذ وقت نصلي. بحب اشجع كل واحد فينا يتمسك بهالكلمه. قديش كلمه الله بتعمل بحياتي اليوم؟ قديش بعطيها مجال؟ احنا بنسمع كثير عن كلمه الله حي وفعاله واقوى من سيف دي حدين، لكن قديش بنعطي فرصه انه نستوعب هالكلمه ونخليها فعلا تسيطر على حياتنا وتشكلنا وتغيرنا. كلمه الله، هذه كلمه الله ليس كلمه انسان. والله وراء كلمته ليجريها فعلا نستطيع أن نتعلم من التاريخ وكل ما عمله الله الشيطان حاول باستمرار انه يحاول يلغي هالكلمه لكن زي ما سمعنا يمكن قتل ناس وعذب ناس وحرقوا ناس لكن كلمه الله لا تقيد كلمه الله لا تقيد يا رب صلي حتى فعلا نحب الكلمه اكثر ونجعلها تسيطر على حياتنا نقاد بكلمة الله نطيع الكلمة ونعمل فيها يا رب نشكرك لأنه الكلمة بلغتنا نستطيع أن نفهمها كثيرين قبلنا لم يستطيعوا أن يفهموا الكلام كانوا يمكن يروحوا على الكنيسة ويرجعوا دونه ما يفهموا أي شيء لكن نشكرك لأجل الكلمة صارت في لغة سهلة نستطيع أن نفهمها وصلي يا رب حتى فعلا نأخذ منها الكلمة ونظهرها ونسمح للكلمة تغير في حياتنا بالكامل بارك من استخدمته والمترجم أعطيهم نعمة من عندك أيها السيد الرب باسم ربنا مخلصنا يسوع المسيح أسأل هذا آمين آمين شعرف أخ سهيل موجود أب. إن شاء الله تكون هذا الدرس بركة إلنا وتشجعنا في هالليلة بينما سمعنا شو الله عمل من خلال كلمته أنا متأكد يمكن هذا موجز للموضوع لو توسعنا فيه كان ممكن أشياء أكثر وأكثر 
لكن ان شاء الله يكون بركه للي موجودين واللي بيسمعونا كمان على النت الرب يباركك رنم ترنيمه رقم 28 بال خلينا نوقف وبينما بنقدم عطيانا للرب هيك بكل قلوبنا بفرح ترنيمه اختارها الاخ سهيل بتحكي عن امانه الرب فاقت امانه ربي الاوصاف لا تتغير ولا تحول ممكن حطوا لنا اياها هي ترنيمه رقم 28 فقط أمانة رب الأوصاف لا تتغير ولا تحول دوما يجدد لنا الألطاف لا تتبدل ولا تزول وفاؤك عظيم وفاؤك عظيم كل صلاح وفير جديد كل الواسع عدم يده سامر وفاؤك عظيم